My name is Barbara Njau. I am one of the co-founders of Bahati Books. And my name is Kodakwashi Kamupira. And what is Bahati Books? So Bahati Books is an e-book publishing company and we publish African literature written by contemporary African authors from Africa and the diaspora. And you're doing a session at Africa Writes in July on e-publishing in Africa. Who's going to be at that session and what's, what's the conversation going to be about? So there's an array of different players that are going to be at this session. Um, it's still kind of a work in progress, but one of the people that we're really excited to be inviting to be part of this conversation is a gentleman called Ophili Odichuku. Uh, he is a co-founder of and the creator of an app called uh, Okada Books, which is based in Nigeria, but available globally um, if you own an Android phone. And essentially what he has done um, um, with his app uh, called Okada Books is uh, anybody who's interested in consuming uh, African literature, particularly literature written by Nigerian authors, can download um, a lot of the content. So he has people, you know, big names like Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie, but also unknown players and rapidly rising players such as our authors um, on Bahati Books. Another interesting author that's gonna, that we are hoping to invite and we hope that she'll be interested is Kiri Taye. Uh, she's a really interesting self-published author. So she very early on established leadership as an erotica writer for African literature. And so um, we're hoping that she would be able to talk about best practices and how she managed to establish leadership as an East uh, published uh, writer. And what, uh, what's the state of um, e-publishing in Africa at the moment? In terms of e-publishing in Africa, yeah. um, it's interesting because uh, the state of publishing varies according to region. So um, in some countries, such as Nigeria, so I mentioned Okada Books, uh, e-publishing and digital content is rapidly growing. So there's lots of people who own smartphones, Kindles and tablets, and you find that there's this interest and thirst for e-books um, and people do download. And also in places like Kenya, where technology um, is completely disrupting different markets, you find a lot of people who are very open to the idea of ebooks. However, in less economically developed countries um, and in different parts of the continent, there's still this reluctance almost to consuming books via digital form. So there's still a lot of, um, I suppose, old school perceptions of, you know, if I can't hold the book physically, then it's not worth my money. And so uh, when it comes to just the general state, it's, it's very varied according to region. And how quickly will that transition be made, do you think, in terms of other countries wanting to have e-books? I suppose it's anyone's guess, really, but I think when it comes to introducing a new concept, um, it, is, it, it needs a tipping point. And so it takes a while before it kind of reaches that critical mass and then it, it's widely uh, accepted as a, as a concept. And so one industry which is interesting, which I can compare it to, is the idea of mobile banking. So 10 to 15 years ago, even 20 years ago, banking was seen as very traditional bricks and mortar business. And when key players such as Safaricom, who introduced the idea of mobile banking started, I can imagine, you know, I wasn't there, but I can imagine that people said, OK, it's good that you can, you know, transact um, using this mobile phone. But when is the actual bank coming along? And so but then what happened is because of the ingenuity of that product, more people who were previously unbankable were able to get bank accounts. And then through word of mouth and through, you know, people getting more confidence in the technology, they then kind of reached this critical mass and everybody now accepts mobile banking. And I think it's the same for ebooks. So I think we're looking perhaps at a five year window. Right now, um, in mo most of the region, ebooks and digital content is still very novel. But I think within the next five years, people will be having Kindles. Smartphones are becoming cheaper, so more people are going to be able to own smartphones and buy the content online. And so I think it's just a matter of time before it becomes a very generally accepted concept. Good. Well, actually, who, who are the authors you're publishing on Bahati? So we've got an array of really interesting authors. And um, just to name but a few. So one of our authors is actually Stanley Gazamba. And he has been tipped by her, first of all, as being one of the most promising um, African literature authors, um, so sort of like being the next Chimamandas and being the next Chinua Jebbers. And um, his story, which we've published, is a collection of short stories called Nairobi Echoes. And it's quite interesting in that it's about someone who sort of like travels between um, two different worlds. Um, so it's touching upon, you know, what happens sort of like in the slums of Nairobi and also what happens sort of like in the more suburban areas. So it's great because it encapsulates sort of like the stories and 
the different stories that sort of like happen in different people's lives across um, the two different worlds that are sort of like existing at the moment um, in Nairobi and I'll say as well in a lot of other African mm. countries. Another very is interesting author that we have is Katlego Kolanye and um, she's quite interesting because her she's actually a transgender um, from Botswana and we've published her anthology and it's a collection of poetry called On About the Same Old Things and um, it's quite interesting because her stories, uh, her poetry is mostly about her experiences of growing up and working as a transgender woman in um, Southern Africa. And um, she's also been one of the representatives basically for um, World Economic Forum. And she also represents the queer uh, communities across Southern Africa. Another very interesting author that we've just recently published is actually Ayibu Makola. And Ayibu is actually based in the UK, in Scotland. And um, she's actually a doctor by profession, but on the side, she actually does a lot of writing. And her stories are really quite interesting because as a medical doctor, you sort of like see the experiences of the people that she actually writes about within her stories. Mm. But also her background, she's actually originally from Nigeria. So some of her stories actually touch upon the things that she's also experienced as an author and about uh, as she grew up in Nigeria. And how many authors are you representing at the moment? So at the moment we represent 20 authors, uh, hoping again to represent even more authors um, sort of like in the coming year. So we're hoping to represent hopefully by the end of the year at least maybe 50. And uh, we've published seven books of which um, we will most likely again publish about maybe 40 by the end of the year.